Hello, welcome to 8.9 News. I'm Finlo Castain. The European Alliance for Regenerative Agriculture is running a pilot study to investigate whether soil health can be assessed through satellite data and whether the information can be used as a basis for farm funding. I spoke to William Houston, a co-founder of IARA, and I asked him what he hopes the investigation will uncover. Our early work at IARA showed us that current agri-food system isn't working for anyone. Farmers, environment, food, human health, rural infrastructure. And we wanted to open up the discussion on this whole area so that farm businesses become more viable. And funding was an easy first subject to approach because it's always at the core of everyone's decision-making in farming. So we looked for a simple, fairer basis for funding. And we found satellite, there's a lot of satellite data within the EU on almost anything. And various scientists suggested that the satellite data could be used to measure pho photosynthetic activity and also bare ground. And the answer to soil health is really keeping green cover on the ground at all times. Therefore, the photosynthetic activity Alan Savory's work and others have shown that bare ground or desertification in an extreme event leads to climate change, it heats the soil up. So we have a belief that if you could measure these two things, reward farmers for photosynthetic activity, penalize them for bare ground and arrive at the funding number, there would be no more bureaucracy or checks or anything else. It would be a very simple process. We so don't know if it'll work. So are you thinking that this would form um, a really substantial basis for funding rather than simply being one of many outcomes that um, that the EU would measure? Yes, very simple, single farm payment, which could be adjusted to give less to big units and more to small farms. Um, we see a lot of the good food is coming from small farms below the current three hectare. And so you would maybe double or treble the payment for the small farms. And also it gives the ability to make it slightly more complex. You could reward people who are at a high level of photosynthetic activity and little bare ground. And at the same time, reward people who are increasing their photosynthetic activity year on year. So that if you're doing things well already, you get the full payment. If you're at a low level, but increasing year on year, you equally get rewarded for that. But if you stay with high bare ground, say in a high value crop such as potatoes or carrots, where it's difficult to achieve these, the economics of the crop would have to be good enough for you to give up the, the high levels of subsidy payment. In your own mind, would there be checks on the ground to back up the satellite information that's being gathered? That's the object of our pilot project at the moment, is to see what's happening on the ground, compare it to the satellite data. And yes, you would need to have continual checks, but more and more people, I'm involved with Soil Mentor here, and more and more people are using various of these apps and they could be tied in um, as as a check. You know, if the department wanted a check as a first step, you could email them your soil mentor data, mm -hmm. and that would give them a a good first check without having to come out and, and check anything on the ground. What's the political response been like so far? Has the European Commission, for example, shown an interest in this approach? Incredible, yeah. Yeah. Um, I introduced IARA for the first time in public. We only started last November, mm -hmm. and I was asked to present at the Northern Roots Conference in Tallinn in Estonia in January, um, which was the first regenerative uh, conference gathering in Eastern Europe. There was someone from the commission there in the audience who approached some of us from IARA afterwards. And I don't think a week has passed since January when there hasn't been someone from IARA in the Commission talking. You mentioned that IARA is made up of 70 farmers across Europe. What's the geographical spread of those involved and in, are you looking to recruit more farmers? We're now actively recruiting new farmers. We've interviewed our first four new members last week. Currently, we go from Norway, quite far north in Norway, down to the south of Greece and from Finland 
in the east through to the Canary Islands in the west. Um, haven't reached Iceland yet, <laughs> but a pretty good spread throughout Europe and of different farm types. When we were looking for the initial members, we actively sought out various farm, farm types to make sure we had representatives of all sorts of farms, all ages of farmers, and um, we're fairly gender equal too. Where's the funding for the Alliance coming from? It's from philanthropic funding. Um, we have been very active. We, kept, we work with a German organization called Project Together, which works with um, basically I don't know, regenerative organizations throughout business, throughout Europe. And we have we've been approached by funders. We're very strict in the funding we take in that um, we won't be influenced. We don't give a lot of credit to our funders. They fund us entirely because they like what we're doing. Now, you were co-founder of the European Alliance for Regenerative Agriculture. Why are you still working to influence European policy from Scotland despite Brexit? <laughs> I was born in Germany. I'm Irish as well as UK citizenship. Um, and I've had close contact with the EU and farmers there for the past 20 years. Both the UK and the EU are going through large scale agricultural reforms. What do you think each could learn from the other? I don't know, really, because I think they're both going down a, a dead end street a bit at the moment. And we need. I have a du There's a Dutch member who talks about a re-evolution. We don't want a, a, re a revolution. That'd be a bit extreme, but we have to re-evolve to a a new system and I think that's where we're working to I'm I'm old enough that I I'm not interested in fiddling around at the edges of current schemes of little bits better we've got to really consider how we would like our lives to be as people as our country as our businesses and aim towards that but rather than just keep adjusting the same old thing slightly every year. If you think both territories are going in the wrong direction, just set out for me briefly your vision for where agriculture should be. I think its priority has to be producing good quality food while certainly not doing any damage to the environment. And I believe it has the potential to restore a lot of our environments. We've done a lot of the intensive arable agriculture of the last 50, 70, 100 years, we're starting to see the real effects of it now with flooded fields, difficulty lifting crops such as potatoes. So we need to be doing that, I think. And the food thing comes to the core because I've heard figures of the health costs of bad food. Of I've heard 60 billion costs of the NHS every year for food and diet related diseases. So we need to be aiming to give people healthy food and help them eat healthy. It has to be a combined effort between farming, health, environment, all working together for the good of all of us, rather than this silo mentality of everybody out for their own profits. <laughs> and I don't know how we do it, but I'm just so pleased to be working with a bunch of people head working towards that direction and open to answers. And just finally, you're Scotland's first savoury accredited regenerative farming consultant. What first attracted you to the Alan Savoury approach? I first met it, I think, when I was in Cumbria on this business in the community project with a bunch of us all trying to help Cumbria recover from the foot and mouth disease. And there was funding for farming, but there wasn't for hotels. And they're also interlinked. And then I met this holistic approach and Alan's framework for decision making that just led you through the process of being aware of the environmental effects of your decision, the financial, the people effects. And it made my life so much easier to have this framework to work to because you could there were very difficult decisions to be made and it just made it so much simpler. So I read his books, um, then got distracted off to help a fruit grow the fruit growing organization, um, Angus Growers, recover from a bad DEFRA decision to take their funding away, which again, there's lots of issues that you had to bring together. And so 
for, you know, I was 60 something by this stage. And I just thought I could work with what Alan had done. And it put all my work, I've worked in all sorts of farms all over the world. And it meant I can help others not make the mistakes I've made. That was William Houston from the European Alliance for Regenerative Agriculture. More news, as ever, on our website, 8.9.com. That's all for now. We're back soon. Thanks for watching.